A mode is that which cannot subsist by itself, but is always belonging to and existing by the help of some substance. It belongs to that substance. For example, some of the modes of a body would be motion, shape, quantity, weight. These are modes of the body. They belong to the body, and they can only exist by that body. Another example would be knowledge, wit, folly, love, doubting, judging. Those are modes of the mind. They belong to the mind, and without the mind, they would not exist. So a mode is something that cannot subsist by itself, but is always belonging to something else. There are different divisions of modes. Uh, first of all, there is essential mode, which we also call attribute. It is that mode that belongs to the very nature or essence of the subject. And that subject can never have the same nature without it. We often think of that as its primary attribute. But it is also called its essential mode, because without this mode, its very nature is different. For example, in a bowl, the essential mode or attribute of a bowl is that it is round. It has roundness to it. If a bowl doesn't have roundness, it doesn't have, it's not a bowl. The same with a stone. The essential mode of a stone is hardness. The essential mode of water is softness. The essential mode in matter is solidity. An essential mode of an animal would be vital motion. The primary essential mode is the first or chief thing that makes up the particular essence or nature and distinguishes it from all others. For example, for a bowl again, its primary essential mode is its roundness. It's what sets it apart from any other type of dish or, or kitchen utensil. The primary essential mode of an angle would be the meeting of two lines, because without those, you cannot have an angle. And also, the primary attribute of a pious man would be to fear and love God. Without that primary attribute, he is not a pious man. The secondary essential mode is any other attribute of a thing, but one that is not the primary consideration. And we often call this the property of an object. For example, the property, or the secondary essential mode of a bowl, would be its volubility, or its ability to roll. And that comes from its primary essential mode, which is its roundness. If it didn't have its roundness, it would not be able to roll. Accidental mode, often called the accident of an object, is a mode that is not necessary to the being of an object because it can have it or it cannot have it, but it doesn't change the nature. For example, on a bowl, a bowl can be smooth or rough. It could have blackness or whiteness. It could be dark or light. It could have motion or rest. These are accidental modes, in this case, of a bowl. They don't necessarily define or make up the nature of a bowl, but they do belong to the bowl. So they're accidental modes. While the term property is limited to the secondary essential mode, it's often used in common language to signify four types of modes. Some of them are essential, and some of them are merely accidental. Sometimes you will hear property used to describe a characteristic of a subject, but it's usually not the only property of that subject. For example, gold is said to have the property of yellow, but it's not the only property of gold. Gold also has ductility and density. It is also possible for property to belong only to one kind of a subject, but not to every subject of that kind. For example, learning, reading, and writing are properties of human nature, belonging only to men, but not to all. It is possible for a property to describe every subject of one kind also, and only them, but not always. 
for example, speech and language, is a property of all men, and to all mankind only, but men are not always speaking. A property can also refer to every subject of one kind, and to them only, and always to them. For example, a property of the divine nature is omniscience and omnipotence, and the divine nature always has that, and they're the only ones who have that. Absolute mode is a property that refers and belongs to its subject without respect or regard to any other being whatsoever. For example, the roundness and smoothness of a bowl belongs to that bowl regardless of any other object. A relative mode is derived from the regard of that object to another object. For example, with a bowl, a relative mode would be greater or smaller than another bowl. An intrinsical mode is conceived to be in the subject or substance. For example, a globe is round. That is its intrinsical mode because it is in the subject. An extrinsic mode belongs to an object, but it is not in the subject. We can say, I love this bowl, but it is not part of that bowl. There's also natural, civil, moral, and supernatural modes. For example, the Apostle Paul. He was a Roman by birth. That was his civic mode. The Apostle Paul's being inspired by God, that was a supernatural mode that belonged to him. Most things are not described by the intimate essence of the particular natural bodies, but by a combination of properties. For example, we identify plants by their color, leaf shape, taste, certain roots and stalks. It is that combination of properties that helps us identify plants.